Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the 2022 Herping Vlog. November started out with a really fun road trip across the Midwest, all the way up to Missouri to look for some really cool salamanders. But along the way, we made a couple of pit stops, one of which was in Tennessee, which this clip is from, and you can see that full episode in my last video. But after we wrapped up herping in Tennessee, I went to meet up with my buddy Alec, who was going to join us for the rest of the trip. And we headed into Kentucky, and it wasn't very long before this happened. So, uh, I'm here with Alec. What's up? And, uh, that is the first snake of the video. I just, I didn't even have time to run an intro. We stopped at a gas station, and under this piece of trash behind the gas station is a freaking Prairie King. So, uh, I'm gonna put an intro before this, just so it makes a little more sense. There's a helicopter, but, uh... Yeah, we're headed to Missouri. We're in Kentucky right now. And uh, we just, look at that thing. This thing is definitely nicer in the sun, but here's one more look at it in the shade before I get my camera out, take some pictures. That is fantastic. What a first snake of the day and what a way to start the video. November Prairie King Snake in Kentucky. So I haven't done much herping in Kentucky, but the herping I have done here has been awesome. I've seen a milk snake, some Kirtland snakes, now a Prairie King. And I've only been here for like two days really, total ever, and it's not even really that. The first time was like a day and a half, and now within 10 minutes of being in the state, we have found a beautiful Prairie King. That is so fantastic. I was not expecting this portion of the trip to go this well, considering how slow it started in Georgia. I'm obviously not going to complain about that. Fantastic. So just like the milk snake in last episode, this guy has a pretty big food bolus in him. So both of the Lampropeltas we have found in November so far have just eaten, which is pretty wild considering how far north we are. I mean, we are literally in Kentucky. That's so crazy. But we're just gonna let this guy go. There might be a little bit more to flip here, so we'll put him back under his piece and keep looking. Happy with that, Alec? <laughs> back to the giant whatever this is that he was under. All right, guys, well, we are here in Missouri, finally. It's been a quite a long journey to get up here, albeit a very fun one, especially with the productive pit stops earlier today. We're gonna go walk around in some really cool pools for one of my favorite salamanders in the US that I have not yet seen in the wild, and uh, hopefully we'll get lucky. I'll give you guys a little more information if we do, and if not, you won't be seeing this. So we've been rambling around in the woods for like an hour now and we were pretty much on the way back to the car when uh, a log that we bypassed on the way in caught our attention and underneath it was one of the most incredible salamanders I have ever laid eyes on. That is what we came all this way to see, the ringed salamander. So that is Ambistoma annulatum. An endemic to the Ozark Plateau, right? To the Oz yeah, the Ozark Plateau. And they are just really something else. I think all of our ambistomatid salamanders are pretty criminally underrated in the, the global herp scale because they're just so unique and so striking. And I think these guys might even be at the very top with that just ridiculously long tail. And Longer that, than the length yeah. of his torso. And the, just the coloration, the cool, they're, they're very slender. Like, this salamander is probably as long as your average spotted salamander, but it's like half of the girth. They're very leanly built, very sleek. So we definitely seem to be a little bit early to see breeding activity for these guys. Um, this guy really doesn't even have a swollen cloaca yet, which is a pretty sure sign that they have not started their big breeding activity um, these guys do tend to be fall breeders, but according to Chad, they will breed in the spring pretty readily if conditions are favorable. But this beauty has been an absolute gem for photos. Hasn't really even been slightly uncooperative. So uh, we're going to make it quick, get a little bit more footage, and then we'll let him crawl back under his log. What a stunning and fantastic salamander. And a long-awaited lifer for me. This is really the first time I've given them an honest try, but I've been in their range quite a few times, just at the wrong time of year. So we found this guy just uphill of uh, this awesome breeding pond where I'm assuming he will shortly be making his way to reproduce. Probably the next time they get a nice rain event because as I've been complaining about for the last month or so, really longer than that, it has been an absurdly dry year all around 
in a particularly dry fall. That is so absolutely fantastic. Number one target for the trip, really, and the whole reason we drove all the way to Missouri here on our first night in the state. So we've got all day tomorrow to look for snakes. So we're gonna let this beauty go, get some sleep, and get up in the morning. All right, my guy. Here's your log. Look at that tail. So majestic. Go on. He's probably got to root around a little bit to get under there. Dig himself back in there. But we will make sure he gets back to his home. And we're probably going to call it a night. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are driving through the lovely agricultural lands of Missouri right now, headed to where we are going to herp for the day. It's like 73 degrees already. Beautiful drifting cloud cover. Um, if it wasn't November, I would say we'd be in for a, a pretty solid day no matter what. But since it is November, I'm going to be optimistic that we're in for a solid day and we're going to keep our fingers crossed. So I will check in with you guys when we get to our habitat. A mouse. Mousy time. A ring neck. Look at that. Well, there's our first snake of the day. A nice little prairie ring neck. That's this year's baby. These guys tend to be a little bit prettier than the uh, the northern and southern ringnecks and that they, they have a little bit more orange on them. As you can see they're on the tail. Good looking little snake. Hopefully this will be the first of many snakes to come today. Some really cool habitat, very tall grass. Here is a really um, typical looking slimy salamander, but these are actually Plethodon albagula, the western slimy salamander here, which uh, we don't get to see too often on the channel, even though they don't really look any different from the ones at home. But neat little observation. We've been seeing quite a few of these guys. Why is this grass so tall? <laughs> look at this. Another ring neck. Two of these guys so far. Does look nice. Excuse me, Wait. ring neck. Hello, little guy. That is just a northern ring neck. <laughs> Alec has our next snake of the day, the uh, elusive brown snake. Look at that. Apparently Chad has never even seen one of these here, so it's kind of different looking than the ones yeah. like in the southeast. Yeah. Well, it's nothing crazy, but it's a nice addition to the diversity, and as I often say, any snake in November is a welcome snake, particularly in Missouri, so we'll let him go and get back to flipping. All right, so Chad just flipped our next snake of the day, which is something we have not seen many of at all on the channel. This is a flat-headed snake, Tantilla gracilis. They are fairly common in like the Ozark region of Missouri. I've seen a couple in other areas, but you can see they have a pink little belly. He's opening his mouth, that's weird, which uh, our southeastern Tantilla do not have. All right, we've seen quite a few of these today. They've definitely been the most common snake, but they are quite pretty. Look at that. Our next prairie ring neck of the day. Look at that. That little extra bit of orange just makes them so much prettier than the ones we get in Georgia. Really neat. This is a nice little vernal pool. Probably breeding habitat for ringed salamanders, spotted salamanders, all that good stuff. Yeah. I just had a double ring neck flip. One of them dipped, and this guy is in the process of dipping. Well, there's lots of snakes out, just nothing uh, that isn't ringnecks and tantilla, apparently. Leg check. Okay. All right, guys, we have made a location switch. Our uh, last spot didn't really pan out, so we're going to try another area. Alec has a garter snake with a huge meal in it. 
Look at that. I'm grumpy. That was a very late season meal though, so we're gonna let this guy go and let him digest that. Definitely do not want him to throw that up because winter is coming and he needs it, so we'll put him back under his rock. Nice Eastern Garter Snake. Look at that little guy. That was a cave salamander, a juvenile. I'm not sure I've ever seen a juvenile cave salamander before, other than the one we saw earlier that got away. Really nice. Good looking Eurasia. All right, everybody. Well, we are on the way back south. The uh, garter snake and the cave salamander were the last thing we saw yesterday, unfortunately. It wasn't the most productive day, but we got what we were really hoping for in the form of that ringed salamander the night before. And uh, Alec has somewhere to be, so our trip is going to be coming to an end here shortly. Uh, mostly going to be driving today, but I might make a stop or two on the way home. It just depends, but... All right, guys, so we're in some random town in Indiana. Like, in town. Like, look at this. This is, this is where this happened. And Alex screams snake and stops and slams on the brakes for this. That is so ridiculous and weird. And it's such a cool looking rat snake. Unfortunately, it looks like he was clipped by a car. But I mean, it's just, look at this place we're in. There's like, we're in a town, like in the middle of the town. And there's just a crazy looking rat snake. That is a beautiful gray rat snake. I mean, one of the nicest looking ones I've ever seen. Just in this weird little town. What a strange way to end this trip. I really cannot believe that. I mean, this is just like a super busy highway in the middle of this town. I, I'm just so confused as to why the snake is here and what it's doing in November of all times. And it's cold. It's like. It's, it's not like freezing out here, but it's in like the low 60s. I genuinely don't understand. There's a river right there, so it's possible that Alec was saying that maybe he, he drifted across the river and didn't know what to do and just ended up over here, but that is just so weird. All right, I'm just gonna go put this guy like in these bushes over here, I guess, because I don't know what else to do, so. We'll put him in here. Like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> really, really insane. So we are in Evansville, Indiana. <laughs> For anyone who's in, who lives in this area, I mean, you might recognize this if, if you're from this area, but it's just, I, there's no habitat anywhere near here. We looked at the map. I mean, we are in downtown Evansville. Like, it's so ridiculous. And it's really unfortunate that that snake got ran over. Um, it's just ridiculous. Look at this. Look at this habitat. It's just a city. Like, not even in the southeast, like in Atlanta, do we get snakes in areas that look like this other than maybe brown snakes. So, really, really crazy. What a way to end the trip. All right, we are crossing into Kentucky now. This little town is right on the border. And like normally I don't disclose exactly where I'm at like this, but I mean, we're not even herping. We're driving home and that happens. Like, it's just like the most obscene and weird thing you can imagine. And that's, I was just telling Alec, that's what makes herping so much fun is you just never know what's gonna happen. All right, everyone. Well, uh, we're back in Tennessee, just chilling with some white-tailed deer here. And uh, I don't think we're gonna be finding any more herbs today. It looks like it's gonna be getting dark on us here soon, but we gave it a nice effort here at the end of the day after cruising that rat snake in Indiana. Um, and did not luck up, but wow, what a weird way to end the trip with that rat. And what a great trip all around. Probably gonna wrap this episode up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a fantastic trip and I will see you guys next time.